Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Lauren, I'm an ICU nurse, and I am helping you remember arterial blood gas numbers and interpretation. So this is the second episode in my ABG series. In the first episode, we talked about normal values and how to remember them. So I'm gonna do a 30 second review of what we learned there. So you can see my normal values here. A normal pH in your arterial blood is 7.35 to 7.45. So 35 to 45 was the takeaway there. Um, my partial pressure of CO2 in my blood is also 35 to 45. And my bicarbonate is 22 to 26. And that's the age in which you can buy a lot of carbs because you have graduated college and you're shopping on your own, but you have a fast metabolism. So you end up buying a lot of carbs, bicarbonate, and then your PaO2 is 80 to 100. So in this video, we'll talk about how to interpret ABGs, now that you know the normal numbers. And we're going to talk about the abnormals. And I'm going to do a different video that goes a lot more in depth on the blood gas equation and why we see the different things that we do with blood gases, how your body actually compensates. Um, but in this video, I'm going to focus on what you actually need to know if you want to get um, if you want to get a nursing school question correct or studying for the NCLEX. This is the information that you actually need to know um, in order to choose the right answer on an exam. Um, if you're interested in learning more, um, or if it helps you to understand the why behind these concepts in order to understand them and memorize them, then I encourage you to watch my more in-depth video. So for the purpose of this video, um, and just memorizing how to interpret ABGs, I want you to remember that carbon dioxide, CO2, is like an acid. Now for any of you chemistry people, um, you might be saying, well, CO2 isn't actually an acid. And that's correct, but for ABG purposes, it acts like an acid. So um, you can watch my more in-depth video if you want to understand why that works. But for this purpose, CO2 is like an acid and bicarbonate, HCO3, is like a base. It actually is a base. So if you're having trouble remembering between CO2 and bicarb, which is the acid and which is the base, remember that B, bicarb, B, base. So that's your base and therefore CO2 is your acid. So when we look at ABGs, I want you to think three things in this order. So the first thing I want you to think about is this, this acidosis or alkalosis. And the way we determine that is by looking at your pH. So we know a normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. If our pH is lower than that, it is acidic. So low pH is acidic. And if you don't already have that memorized, I like to think low lemon, right? Lemons are acidic, and if you, if you have a low pH, you have an acidic pH. Alkalosis, on the other hand, means basic. So it's going to be the opposite. If you have a high pH, you're going to have a basic pH. So that's how you, you determine acidosis versus alkalosis. The second question you need to ask is, is this a respiratory cause or a metabolic cause? So if it's a respiratory cause, it's going to be CO2 related. Right, because we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out CO2. So I want you to remember that you blow off CO2. And then also remember that we're talking about your blood, right? This is arterial blood gases. So we're focused on what your blood is reading. So if you're blowing off CO2, that means the CO2 in your blood is going to be lower because you exhaled your CO2 that used to be in your blood. So if we have a respiratory acidosis, Right? Think about CO2 is acidic. So what does our CO2 need to do to make your pH acidic? Well, CO2 is like an acid. If you increase that acid, increase your CO2, you're going to have acidosis. You'll have a respiratory acidosis. What about if we decrease the CO2 
in our blood. By hyperventilating, we're going to blow off lots of CO2. We're going to have a decreased CO2 in our blood. If we have decreased CO2, which is acid in our blood, we're going to have less acidity in our blood. So we're going to have alkalosis, basic blood. So we talked about blowing off your CO2 alkalosis. That's if you're hyperventilating. If you retain CO2, so respiratory acidosis, is when you're not blowing off your CO2. So something like COPD or pneumonia, respiratory depression, something where you're not having good gas exchange. The CO2 that's in your blood can't get out and be exhaled. So let's talk about metabolic causes of acidosis or alkalosis. So metabolic means we're going to look at what your kidneys are doing, which is your bicarb. So your kidneys can pee out bicarb or it can make more bicarb to put in your blood. So think about bicarb as a base, B for B, right? Bicarb is a base. So if we make more bicarb from our kidneys, we're going to have more base in our blood, and so we're going to have a metabolic alkalosis. What about if we pee out our bicarb? So our, we have less bicarb, less base in our blood. We're going to have acidic blood. So that concept right there, that CO2 is acidic, bicarb is basic, um, and that your lungs can control the CO2 that you blow off or retain, and your kidneys can control the amount of bicarbonate produced or peed out. That's the most important part of this video. If you memorize that, um, you have ABGs. So the third thing that we look at when we look at ABGs is whether they're compensated, partially compensated, or uncompensated. And we will talk about that as we go through different examples. Um, in most cases, something will happen to cause an acidosis or an alkalosis, and it'll start out uncompensated. Um, and then as your body realizes what's going on, if it's able to, it will start compensating, it will become partially compensated, and then ultimately it will compensate. And when it's compensated, it will have a corrected pH. That's how you know it's compensated. But we will talk about that. So now I want to go through respiratory acidosis and alkalosis as well as metabolic acidosis and alkalosis and talk about what values you would see. So with respiratory acidosis, remember CO2 is an acid. Um, what kind of pH are we going to see? We're going to see an acidic pH, right? So we're going to see a pH that's low, low for lemon, um, and is less than 7.35. Right, it's acidic. And we know it's a respiratory cause. So that means CO2 is the cause. Your lungs have altered the amount of CO2, and that's causing acidosis. So what kind of CO2 level would cause acidosis? Well, we know CO2 is an acid, so if we increase our acidic CO2, we are going to cause a respiratory acidosis. So your body is going to start out uncompensating, meaning our HCO3, our bicarb, is going to start out normal because the cause is respiratory, so your kidneys haven't even realized that anything weird is going on. So you have an uncompensated is what you start out with. Now, a little bit of time goes by, minutes to hours, and your body realizes, I don't like this pH, right? You, you have enzymes and proteins in your blood that function at a normal pH, and your pH here is acidotic, and your blood and your body is not happy. And so your body says, hey, kidneys, help me out here. I need to start compensating. I need a happy pH because my lungs are acting real weird. Um, so your kidneys say, yes, I can help. I am going to help fix this acidosis. So you have an acidosis. What can you do with your basic bicarb to fix your acidosis? Well, if we increase our basic bicarb, our pH will look more normal. All right, so we have partially compensated when our bicarb has started responding, but it doesn't work immediately, right? So our pH is still less than 7.8. 3, 5, but our bicarb is elevated because it's trying to help. So we're, we're starting to compensate. We're partially compensated. When it finally does compensate, 
our bicarb increases to a level where our pH is barely normal, 7.35 or 7.36. You will never overcompensate. Your pH will never go to 7.41. Um, but 7.35 or 7.36 um, with a high CO2 and a high bicarb will give you a compensated respiratory acidosis. So let's talk about respiratory alkalosis now. So we know it's alkalotic. That's the first thing we look at, right? So we know our pH is basic. So our pH is greater than 7.45. And it's a respiratory cause. So that means our CO2 is causing the respiratory alkalosis. So what kind of CO2 level would cause alkalosis? Well, CO2 is an acid. So if we increase our acid, we'll have acidosis. So let's decrease our acid and we'll, be, we'll get alkalosis. So a low CO2 in our blood, right, we're hyperventilating, we're blowing off CO2, that will cause a respiratory alkalosis. And this just happened, right? So our kidneys have no idea anything's going on. Our bicarb is within normal limits. Um, and so we have uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. Minutes to hours go by and your body says, hey, kidneys, help me out here. I need to compensate. I am not happy at this really basic pH. So your bicarb is going to say, let me help. You're already alkalotic. You're already basic. So what can this basic bicarb do to fix it? Well, it can decrease the bicarb. So decreased bicarb, um, your pH is going to start correcting, but it's not immediate. So this is partially compensated because bicarb has started to compensate, but your pH hasn't reacted yet. You haven't caused a happy pH yet. So eventually, your bicarb is going to start kicking in here, and the low bicarb, less base, is going to bring your pH more acidic. So it's going to bring it back to a normal level. So it's going to be barely normal here, like 7.45, 7.44. Barely normal here with our low CO2, which is the cause, and then our bicarb, which is correcting. So that would be compensated, fully compensated. Respiratory alkalosis. Let's talk about metabolic acidosis. So acidosis, you already know acidosis means low pH, so our pH is going to be less than 7.35. And we know it's a metabolic cause. So that means our kidneys, right? So our bicarb is the cause. So bicarb is basic. Um, if we increase our bicarb, we're going to have basic pH. So let's decrease our bar bicarb, and we're going to have an acidic pH. So we have a decreased bicarb, something in our system. Either we're having kidney problems, DKA, something is decreasing our bicarb, something metabolic. And your CO2 is within normal limits because you haven't compensated. Your lungs aren't even aware that anything is going on yet, right? So you have uncompensated metabolic acidosis. So pretty soon your body's going to say, I really don't like this acidosis. My body's not functioning well. I need help compensating. So it's going to tell your lungs, please help compensate. So remember, CO2 is an acid. If we already have acidosis going on, we are going to decrease our CO2 in order to compensate. So our we start hyperventilating, starting to blow off CO2, um, but it doesn't happen immediately. So we have partially compensated metabolic acidosis. Our pH is still the same, maybe a little bit better, but it's not within normal range yet. Um, our bicarb being low is the problem, so that's still low, but our CO2 is trying to compensate. It's starting to compensate. So minutes to hours go by, and finally our low... CO2, our hyperventilating, is starting to pay off, um, and our pH comes back into barely normal limits. So it's still on the acidic side of normal, but it's normal, meaning that we are fully compensated. So lastly, let's talk about metabolic alkalosis. So alkalosis, our pH is basic, right? So we're going to have a high pH greater than 7.45. And it's a metabolic cause, so our bicarb is the cause. So remember, bicarb is basic. What kind of bicarb? We need higher low bicarb to cause a basic pH. Well, bicarb is basic, so if we increase our basic bicarb, we're going to have a basic pH. 
We're going to start out with normal CO2 because we haven't compensated, right? Uncompensated. Now our body is going to get tired of trying to work with a basic pH. And it's going to say, hey, lungs, help me out here. And lungs are going to say, what do I need to do with my CO2, my acidic CO2, to help my basic pH? Well, let's increase the acid so we even out our pH. So we're going to increase our CO2 to help with our increased bicarb. And our pH isn't going to respond right away, so we have a partially compensated situation. After this goes on for a while, your CO2 finally can bring your pH back into normal limits, and so you have 7.5, barely normal, 7.44, something like that, um, pH, meaning that you're fully compensated. So hopefully that made sense. I know that was a lot of content, um, but really ABGs aren't that difficult. If you think about CO2 as an acid, bicarb as a base, um, and you think about your definitions and your normal values, um, you will get all of these questions correct. So thanks for watching. Comment below. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go over a lot of examples um, so you can make sure that you really understand this and can do it on your own. I'd like to give a little shout out to allnurses.com for helping me share these videos. Um, I'll see you in the next video.